This is not a translator. I'm gonna let her introduce herself to you. I'm Desiree. <laughs> oh my God. Holy shit. Yeah, this I'm so happy. Oh my God, Phil, how the I'm hell did you do I'm this? I'm so happy. The El Patron operates out of 22nd Street Landing in beautiful San Pedro, California, and they have a slew of one and a half day trips where you'll fish with only 10 anglers on board. Bluefin tuna fishing, yellowtail fishing is outstanding in Southern California, and there's no better way to do it than on the El Patron. 310-832-8304 or visit 22ndstreet.com. All right, Phil, here we go. Nice ones. Nice ones. And once we're done loading here, we'll be heading off the island, okay? Oh, where'd he go? Angel shark. Fred says hi. Sharks say hi. Shark heaven. Or maybe not heaven for them, but a lot of sharks. And we got the bait. See ya. Ryan Holmes headed to King Harbor in Redondo Beach to catch some perch and maybe some calico bass with his seven-year-old son, Gavin. But then they got an incredible surprise. They hooked and landed this beautiful yellowtail. What a great father and son moment. Gavin, congratulations from Friedman Adventures, your number one. Nice going, boys. Stay tuned. You're watching Friedman Adventures. Mwah. Let's go. Chop, chop. Hey, good morning, my friends, and welcome to beautiful Surfside, California. It's a gorgeous Saturday morning, and there's so much to catch you up on. Bluefin tuna, a little bit of albacore information. We've also are wondering, is that white sea bass? And Halibut going to get back in the picture. We saw some tremendous scores there south of the border. We'll check in on Ensenada. And our local fishing in Southern California this year has been absolutely phenomenal. Add to that that we've got Dan Lightfoot and Michael Limon fishing in the surf behind me. It's a fabulous Saturday morning. It's going to be a great weekend. And I can't thank you enough for being here and spending some time with me. You know what time it is. It's time for the morning briefing. Good morning. My friends, oh my God, what a great surprise to come out here this morning. And Dan is here with Michael. They're digging up sandworms. Dan is looking fantastic. He's on the carnivore diet. Him and I are doing that. Man, he has lost a lot of weight off his diabetes meds. Really great stuff. I'll get you caught up on the carnivore diet, on my carnivore diet <laughs> updates. But I just, I saw the guy and I go, whoa, man, you are losing weight. You're looking good. So that is all good stuff. Hey, if you get a chance, hit that like button, please. We deeply appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel. Well over 10,000 subscriptions now. Tick that little bell. You'll be notified when there is new content. And of course, share these videos with a friend. That makes a big difference to our growth. And I deeply appreciate all you do. By the way, I normally are, am answering all of your comments. And I know I've been very poor at that, but I read them all. And I thank you so very much. Two more days of the Orange County Fair and the sleep deprivation, three, four hours a night will come to an end after a month of that. It's been really, really crazy. All right, my friends, good to be with you. Let's get you caught up on what Pat Whitaker's doing on the bait boat manana. He is going to head over to Catalina Island in just a little bit. He's got sardines and anchovies. Call him and make arrangements because sometimes he moves or Sometimes there's a problem, and I don't want you to go depending that Pat will be there. But definitely give him a call, and he can take care of your bait needs. Catalina Island, right in front of the casino, that's where he'll be, and he'll take really good care of you all. All right, let's get into it because there's a lot to talk about. I do want to mention that the El Patron out of 22nd Street Landing just put on some great new trips. It's a fast boat, great crew and really, really beautiful little rig out of 22nd Street. Give them a call, 310-832-8304. Jump on the El Patron while there's still time. All right, let me just talk about Morro Bay. There's been some big bluefin tuna up that way. Wouldn't surprise me if some longfin, albacore, get into that mix. Out of Monterey, we've been seeing some steady albacore action up in that neck of the woods. We never got the bite that I thought would manifest itself down here in Southern California. And I know the water's really warm, but offshore, we still have some cooler water. And like Jim Hughes, 
uh, on the Cortez. He, Rambo, most of you know him by Rambo. Uh, he's dedicating some time. If he gets it done on the Bluefin Tuna, or he has a charter group that wants to go looking for Albacore, he's been dedicating some time bouncing around out there. Jim, way to go. He hadn't found any volume yet, but hopefully that will happen in the very near future. All right, let's talk south of the border in Ensenada, where we have great mixed bag fishing going on. We see good bonita, barracuda, calico bass, a few halibut, occasional white sea bass. We've got all that mixed bag stuff going on in the local areas like Puna Banda and Todos Santos Island until we get the offshore bite to become more consistent while we're seeing quite a bit of bluefin tuna out there. It seems like they're feeding on this really small bait down in that neck of the woods. You know that also if you've been on a San Diego based boat down in that area. A lot of the full day boats out of San Diego have been going down into that neck of the woods and they see the fish, but it is so frustrating. It seems like they're on that smaller bait. You toss a big sardine at them and they're like, whoa, what is that? I, I, that, that doesn't look good. I'm, I'm going to keep eating this stuff that I've been eating for a while. So I think that's what it is, kind of trying to match the hatch, maybe a smaller Colt, Colt Sniper, uh, Daiwa Sakana lure, something small, shiny. Maybe that will get you a bite when all else fails. So we'll continue to monitor down there, but good. Mixed bag fishing, I don't know how you can beat that. Bounce across the border into San Diego, where there are some boats that get them, many boats getting them, and I'm talking about the bluefin tuna right now. Some guys miss, you know, you just don't get on the right school, or you go through that really frustrating kind of situation where you're seeing them, but they won't bite. But in most cases, there's been some really great fishing, and it's mixed, anywhere from 20 to 200 pound fish roaming around, a lot of it up here in this area. When I say up here, I'm talking about the San Clemente Island area where we continue to see some really good fishing going on. The boats that have been the most successful or the anglers that have been the most successful are observant and they are changing it up all the time. And knowing when to go to the heavy line and when to fish the light line, that is all part of the learning process and that will deeply deeply make your trips a heck of a lot better if you're doing that. In other words, if it's a finicky bite, you're fishing 25, 30 pound fluorocarbon and that will get you a bite. However, you've got to also factor into this, there's a lot of big fish around. So if you get bit on lighter line, you can really, really get screwed up in a hurry. Ernie Montano just had a great trip on board the Amigo where they caught several big fish. Ernie was on a fish for quite some time. 100 plus pound bluefin tuna. He was fishing 30 pound with 35 pound Opsin fluorocarbon. Got this big 100 pounder right up there to color until his circle hook pulled through the jaw. And it was heartbreak for Ernie as well as for the crew on board the Amiga. But they caught plenty of fish on that trip. It was really, really good. Cortez out recently. Limits of 30 to 60 pound bluefin tuna before lunchtime. I mean, they put the wood to them, and when they do that, they're able to get offshore and, of course, fish for or look for some albacore. Rambo is the albacore king. I'll tell you that. They had a couple of yellowfin tuna to go along with it. Voyager limits a bluefin tuna, 46 on the yellowtail. Many other scores just like that. Condor with some awfully big fish. Constitution with some really good fishing. Again, it's hit and miss, but there's a lot of great catching going on. This bluefin tuna biomass and the biomass of bait that actually holds those fish here. They're, they're going to be gone if there's not something to munch on. And the biomass of anchovy and sardine and mackerel this year is phenomenal, which leads us to believe it's going to be a phenomenal marlin year in Southern California. Also, we are seeing so many marlin around the west end of Cat back there to San Clemente Island, several areas, even on the beach off Dana, there's a lot of marlin around, so it's going to be a big year. All that feed will hold it here. At night, some really good hits going on, and then some misses on bluefin tuna. 300 gram jigs seem to be working best of all right now. Sometimes you got to bump it up to 400. Listening to the captain in the wheelhouse, when he says drop, you need to drop immediately. And also keep in mind how important it is to get to the right depth. You've got to get your jig in front of those fish. The captain can see them, and he's telling you 300 feet, 350 feet, meter colored line. Changes color every 100 feet, 
that tells you exactly where your jig is and that is so important to your success. So still some really good fishing going on. Kelp patties, there's still some really good kelps. A lot of times you're dry and looking around for a long time, but there's still some good kelps. It's been pretty tough for the most part, but if you find that lucky kelp, there's Dorado, Yellowtail on it. You just never know. So work hard, and it's a numbers game. The more kelps you find, talking to private boaters now, the better your chances are of getting a score in. So keep that in mind, and hopefully you're going to find that lucky kelp. Now, full day boats out of San Diego, still pretty darn tough. It's really taking guys to the Coronado Islands right now where you do need a passport to fish. But offshore has been tough. Hopefully that's going to come together. Scott Buchert is back from Alaska. Scott's a great kid, and he worked on the Point Loma yesterday. I think they had one Dorado and one Yellowtail offshore, and that has been a pretty common theme for the full day guys. Guys that leave in the morning, come back that same evening. San Diego, Mission Bell, Grande, Liberty, all those guys that are so good at what they do. If there's any fish to be caught, they're going to get on it. And the Malahini, for example. I know that Steve Bermudez, a good friend of mine, was on the Malahini, and they ran almost down to Ensenada on a trip that leaves in the morning, comes back that very same evening. That's a long ways. Steve said they saw all kinds of fish, but again, they were on the smaller bait. They were feeding on the smaller bait. The bluefin tuna, that is. Very tough trip, and there's been a lot of that. As I mentioned, some guys have decided, let's go to the Coronado Islands. They're biting their vendetta. Two's been doing real good. Ray Summers has had some magnificent trips there. The Mission Bell has had some great trips there. I know the San Diego went there yesterday for 41 yellowtail, 80 barracuda, 11 calico bass, and some rockfish for 33 anglers. That is some fun fishing. Fly lining a bait is a great way to get bit, but there's some surface iron fish. In addition to that, again, you're going to have to change your bait regularly after you take the time to choose a really good hot bait. That'll make all the difference in the world fishing Opsin floral or whatever floral that you like. We like www.opsinusa.com. Put in FAA at checkout. Fishing floral will make a big difference to your success. Sometimes it fires up and you can go to the 40 pound, even heavier than that. Other times you got to fish 25 pound. Keep in touch with your surroundings. Observant is the name of the game. You've got to be really, really observant, and that'll make a huge difference to your success. And if you're new to the game, make friends with a crew member. That will really help you a great deal. So mixed bag there at the Coronado Islands with a lot of yellowtail. That's good. It's a weekend now, so I'm uh, guessing the boat pressure is going to be an issue. We'll see as we go along. All right. Um, as we move you from the island situation now, we talked to Coronado Islands. We'll talk now about San Clemente Island. There's a lot of yellows there, but there's a lot of sea lions, and they're a big pain in the neck. The bluefin tuna is so close to Clemente that most boats are opting to fish BFT. Not a lot of interest in fighting sea lions for a yellowtail and catching calico bass when you've got these big monster bluefin tuna lurking around so close by. So that's what most guys are doing there. Catalina Island, kind of hit and miss, but overall, just kind of ho-hum. A few yellows there. There's the occasional bonita and barracuda and calico bass fishing. Sometimes it's not that bad, but a weekend, it's going to be tough over there, I would assume, here this morning. And some of those guys that have been full-day trips, like the Pursuit, are vacillating between the island and going offshore, depending upon the current situation. So, We'll keep our eyes on that for you very closely. Up in the Channel Islands, I'm looking forward to another big explosion on white sea bass and halibut. We had several of those during the past week. Endeavor, Mirage, several other boys, a lot of private boater fish going on. There's been some really excellent fishing with regard to that. Here yesterday, not much on the sea bass and halibut. Plenty of rockfish, however, to fill this X out of the Channel Island area, out of interest, we're fishing up in Santa Barbara where the Stardust had 16 lingcot along with some good rock fishing. Coral Sea with 11 lingcot, got an excellent rock fishing to go along with that. So that's the island situation for you right now. Now the coastal situation, we take a look down there in San Diego where the Calico Bass Bite has been as good as it has been for many decades. It's been a phenomenal season. I, I'll put it down in the record books as bass fishing returning to SoCal, and it was really good. It's been good on the sport boats. Remember, if you can't get a bite, drop that floral carbon down to 12 pound, to 15 pound. Choose a good high bait, and you'll be bit 
all day long. That is a definite good way to go. Gino Machino was out on the three-quarter day sea star up there out of Oceanside. And a group of firemen and their families, they were out there and they had an absolute ball. Really great fishing for them as they were catching sand bass and sheep's head and a variety of other species. Gino, thanks for the great photos. Always good to salute the men and women from the fire department or any other service folks, police officers, firemen, military guys. We thank you all for your service. That looks like really good fishing to me. Up here in this neck of the woods, now we're talking Monte Carlo and boats out of San Pedro and Long Beach. And those guys have been doing really, really well. We've seen nothing short of phenomenal sand bass fishing yesterday. We've also seen some good calico bass fishing, but the sand bass bite yesterday was excellent. Reverse dropper loop, a torpedo sinker, lighter line, I like 15 pound, and choosing a really good hot anchovy made all the difference in the world. Really good fishing on the Monte Carlo, the Enterprise, Western Pride, City of Long Beach, Native Sun, Victory. Great fishing, and I'm leaving out some guys, not intentionally, just because it becomes redundant. Just great fishing. There's still some barracuda around. We like surface iron for that barracuda. That works really, really well. Phenomenal fishing going on up in the Channel Islands. Well, let's talk about Marina Del Rey. Also some sand and calico bass there. Good rock fishing going on. Then we get you over to the Channel Islands and the local boats continue to pick off a halibut from time to time. They also catch a sand or calico bass every once in a while. And uh, it's been pretty darn good local fishing also as more surf fishermen are walking by and hopefully they're going to have some good fishing today. Well, see how that all works out. All right, uh, up there in the Channel Islands, again, some good fishing, Ventura Harbor Sword Fishing tomorrow. Kids fish free on the Half Day Boat California out of Ventura Harbor Sword Fishing with a paid adult 12 and under. You go free. And the Island Spirit, another great local boat up there with a lot of fun. 805-676-3474. I thought Michael had a fish. I saw him go running off there a second ago. And I thought he was on. He's having way too much fun with these sandworms. I'm with him, by the way. Something about digging up sandworms here. I don't know. The hunter, you know, and the prey kind of a thing. Primal kind of instinct flowing and coursing through his veins right now. Actually, I dig those things up and have a lot of fun doing that myself. Um, our surf fishing bite has been really excellent. I see my friends way down this time. They've moved position, but we've seen some good spot fig croaker, yellow fig croaker, We've seen really good halibut fishing in the surf. It's really been good. Digging up sandworms or going to big fish bait and tackle on the corner of Seal Beach Boulevard and PCH. That's a great place. Your surf fishing headquarters. They've got all kinds of good baits and tackle for you there. Ray Johnson fishing locally. Look at that nice flatty for Ray. Nice going, Ray. Happy to see you pulling that one. And also, as we continue to watch other private boaters, they've had some really good fishing on halibut. It's been a phenomenal halibut year in SoCal this year also. All right, my friends, Pat Whitaker is going to have your bait over there at Catalina Island. I'm guessing uh, probably around two in the afternoon, but call him. You got his phone number right there. Pat's always game to take a call. He'll call you back if you leave a message. Keep that in mind. So we've got that laid down for you. We'll see how this bluefin tuna bite goes. The Amigo with a great trip recently. Thunderbird's been having a spectacular fishing with big fish mixed in. Some of that fish really, really big. Joe Russo, private boater and a dear friend of mine. He's got that uh, rail rod pipe assist, the pipe assist. Well, Joe, I'm screwing the name up. Anyway, uh, he had a 200 pounder the other day in the rail rod assist pipe. I think that's it. Rail rod assist pipe. It's phenomenal. Some of us guys can't get down on our knees anymore because we're older guys and some of you have knee problems. This solves that problem. It really, really does. So we'll continue to watch everything. At the end of today's report, if you didn't see an interview I did with Pat Whitaker on the bait boat manana, he fished here for many, many years, many, many years ago, and now he's back providing bait in Catalina Island. I'm going to run that at the end of today's show. All right. Have a great one, everybody. Tons of fishermen walking by. Dan and Michael failed me. They were unable to catch a surf fish on camera, but that's okay. They got a long way to go. High tide is still going to be coming up in just a little bit. 
like, share, subscribe, tick that little bell. It means all the world to us. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, providing more information for you. Spot to Fi and Apple Podcast also. All right, lots of fishermen walking by me here right now. I send you all my very, very best for a wonderful weekend and a great Saturday. Two more days at the Orange County Fair for me, and then back to dedication. Well, I dedicate anyway. That's why I'm getting three hours of sleep, but 100% right here on the channel for each and every one of you. All right, my friends, have a great day. And as always, I hope to see you really, really soon. Pat, what are you doing, man? Hi, cheers. Hi, Phil. It's How been, are you? It's, it's been a long time. You know, you've been inviting me down here for lunch for a month now. And if I would have known that lobster and shrimp were on the menu, yeah, I would have been you, here you, a long you, time you, ago, you, man. It was, it was a good day. It was, you, you came on the right day. <laughs> so what's happening? So what's happening is you're here. You're going to have a bait operation at Catalina Island here very, very soon. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But for people who don't know you, you've been in this game, especially in Southern California, for a long time. In fact... I, I'm guessing you and I've known each other for what 40 30 years 40 I don't know pushing, I think I thought about it the other day and it's somewhere um past the mid 30s closer to 40 and, wow. and, it, and it was all right here and I, have you had therapy for that <laughs> there's people that probably having therapy over me actually <laughs> truth be told but um it was a long time ago and I, I've been in Oregon for the last almost 15 years yeah and what boats did you run in Southern California? Oh, what God. boats were you on? At, at this landing, I... I and we're at Birth 55, we're at Long Beach, Ford Fishing, Long, having lunch. Old Queen's Wharf. And yeah. The, the Southern Cal was my main boat. Then then I ran the El Dorado, the Pacifica, the Aztec, even the Victory. Um, Any yeah. favorite boat of yours? Oh, the Southern Cal was a good boat. We had, yeah. we had a good run with that boat. It was a, a little... It was uh, The competition was stiff, and but we held our own. You were up against guys like Sean oh, Morgan. The, nah, and, but, but the Monte Carlo, you know, oh. Monte Carlo, Mark and Paul. And um, Mark and Paul were just captains, and they, they, they weren't. This was before they, I don't know if they owned the money then or not, but, yeah. you know, and um, and then Ray on the Matt Walsh, when the Matt Walsh was going full speed. It was good. It was a different time. There was a, there, there was a, um, it was good fun. It, it was, was friendly it, competition, it but it was real. It was real competition. It's it doesn't appear to be like that, it, 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 like it was um, thirty years ago. The, the guys, the electronics are a lot different. You yeah, know, seventy-five, uh, number seventy-five. And uh, the fishing was a lot different. And you know, we had sand bass and barracuda to we lived on in the summertime. And, yeah, I mean, we were running twilights um, seven days a week, and I don't even know if they have a twilight boat anymore. Yeah, the, some guys still do, but not like it used to be, no, right? You no, know, it used no. to be full rack. You know, and then you had Sean and, and Ed on the city. Yeah. and um, Talking about Eddie Leland, who, uh, of course, yeah, we, we, our we thoughts love, and prayers are with him. We, we, we love Eddie Leland. He was, Ed was always a good guy. Yeah. Don't start. No, I, I do. You're, I know you do. You know. know. Um, so, um on with the show. So I, I, I moved to Oregon. Hey, I just want to ask you one more question. Yeah. What was the name of the boat? Was it the real special? Oh, yeah. You used to call me at like three in the morning. You had a <laughs> wide open bat. You, you were killing them at night. We had a 7 to 4 a.m. run. and 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. And and we used to. And people thought you were nuts when all, you announced all, that. All winter long. All winter long on Fridays and Thursday, Fridays and Saturdays. And we would carry full loads of people or, or limited to 20 people. And, and we got them. You know, the, the, the bass used to bite in the wintertime. Um, out in front in the horseshoe and the wrecks that I used to fish. That back then were kind of secretive um, wrecks. That there are, um, there, there is there. Um, That's okay. No, oh, hi, hey, Renee. Yeah, no problem. I forgot to give the cigarettes to him. Okay. Thanks. We're doing an interview, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, okay it's okay. Oh, that's Thank all right, Renee. That's okay. the 20 I found in the laundry, in the change in the laundry, and your cigarettes <laughs> okay. I bought, and your three letters, but there's four, and I don't know what to do with the fourth one. Okay. Okay, that's it. And, and how much money? What do I owe you? Well, are you? Are you? Figure it out because whatever change okay. I had left over. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, honey. Thank you. Okay, Alan's coming down. But okay. Yeah. Okay.
I'll see him shortly. Thank you. Thanks for making your appearance on our show, <laughs> Renee. Our show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, he's doing a, we're doing an interview right now. For what? See yes. the microphone there? Yes. It's called Freeman Adventures Podcast. You're on it now. Oh, my gosh. How interesting. You, know, you want to wave at everybody? I'm so excited by everybody. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. That's so fun. Maybe I'll stay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thanks, Renee. Work, Take care. Right. Nice meeting you. Okay, thank you. So that nighttime fishing was great. It really was. And um, since I've been back down here um, the last month, I've tried it a little bit, and, and they, they still bite pretty fair at night. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and because I, I can't catch nothing in the daytime, I can tell you. But <laughs> I'll have fishing. to come out with you some night. Right. That'd be fun. Yeah. All right, so then you go to Oregon. So I go to Oregon, and um, I stay away from the ocean for a few years, and then I made the mistake of going back over the coast and smelling the salt. And our old old friend Donnie Brockman, I told him I wanted a boat just to fish with and screw around. That had a sonar, and anyway, Donnie Brockman um, led me into the, the the old bait boat from Port Wainimi that had been there. The boat seventy years, seventy five years old now, and had fished out of Port Wainimi. One owner, the the owner and his son, and they ran the boat, and they um, they had a frozen bait business and a live bait business up there. And turned this little boat into a million dollar operation. Wow. Yeah. It's called the Manana. The Manana. I love the name. Yeah, right? Of yeah. course you would. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they, they sold mm -hmm. out and the boat, um, the new company didn't use it. Um, and um, it sat on the mooring for a couple of years. So I took it and I took it up to Oregon. And the boat had never been past Point Conception. It, it had never been anywhere. It fished in the bay, the Santa Monica Bay. And then. Um, up out of Oxnard its whole life. It, it, um, and um, I took it up there and I, I went way overboard and I rigged the boat up and I, I turned it into a, a light boat up in, in, in Oregon. Yeah. It's got all the goodies on it and made it into a, a boat that could survive Oregon. And um, weather's nasty, huh? The weather has, it, it can get severe. Yeah. And so I, I was a light boat there for a couple of years. The first year went real well. And then the state of Oregon decided that they, they did not need um, or want light boats to support the, the, the small squid fleet that was there. And rather than fight it, I, I'd always had this idea of um, a light bait operation at Catalina Island. And which, way, which is, it's you know, the best ideas are those ideas that people say, Wait a minute, why hasn't somebody done right. that before? Well, it's been done before. Bill Hardgrave did it. And at the Who's time. Who's buddies of both of ours. Right. Bill's like a funny yeah. guy, man. He, he, he there's was. a lot of He's Bill Hardgrave stories. Yeah, there's a lot of Bill Hardgrave <laughs> stories. Yeah, me and him go deep. <laughs> time. But he's gone. You know, Bill's yes, gone. Yeah, I did know that. Yeah. Um, um, Can I tell you something funny about yeah, Bill? Yeah. He used to leave these filthy messages on my phone. <laughs> On the recording, a, well, it was mostly group. about the guys, like yeah, this yeah. guy's a <laughs> SOB and everything. And I would, I had a BHS radio in my right. office when I was doing nine seven six dinner, right? And I'd hear somebody, Paisano or Strasser or whoever, right? And they'd say, "Hey, you picked me up," and then I'd play the recording of Hargrave <laughs> saying, "Hey, f you, you piece of," and they're like, "Hey," uh, and somebody'd go like. Why is Hargrave so mad at you? Right. It was the recording the whole time. Anyway. We, we, we had a deal every morning. Um, and, and guys listened up and down the coast from San Diego to Santa Barbara. It was called The Really Big Show with me and Hargrave. And we went at it every morning. Oh, really? You oh, guys were fighting? Oh, it was huge. It was, it was huge. People was, look forward to it. Well, you got better ratings than Freeman Adventures. But, but if, we, if it would have been rated, it would have been rated high. Because it... it <laughs> He, he, we left the um, mothers and sisters and stuff out for a while, but that, that, that went to the wayside. And I mean, and he, Bill Hargrave had one of the sharpest tongues. I have a sharp tongue, but it, he was hard to compete Oh, my with. God, he was. And he was quick, boy. He was quick-witted. Um, but anyway. He did Catalina Bait then. So he, he tried Catalina Bait, and at the time, he had the, basically the whole harbor. He had all the boats almost, and he had all the business in the harbor. And he, it was a, it, it was difficult to fit in Catalina. You know, it's a full day for a bait boat to, to go from the coast, catch bait, go to the coast, and go over there. And all the water changes that happen in between here and there, which and, affect the bait, oh, right? You kill the bait, yeah. right? Yeah, you yeah. know, going five, ten degrees every five miles, it can change. You know, especially if you 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 came from in the harbor. Yeah. Um, and by the time he get there, half the bait would be dead. 
and then having a person on the bait boat or the bait barge, tending the bait barge and being on the bait barge when they're supposed to. And, you know, that, that was straight cash back then. And it was, it's difficult to find somebody to, to handle your cash and you end up in the long end of the deal. Yeah. So it, 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 he quit it because it was just a pain in the ass. Steve Grayshock did it back in the day and he was under the, the, the same kind of deal trying to go back and forth. My boat, I'm going to be there. I'm going to live there. The boat's going to live there. We're going to catch the bait there. And it's it's going to be, we're going to, we're going to try to run a good operation and offer, offer the people something. Because I, I know I fished a skip over at the island in the last 10 years a lot. And I'd run out of bait. Yeah. And, and I, I would have. You're screwed. I, I would have I ran from the west end to the east end to get bait a hundred times. And, and even sport guys on the sport boats, things happen. They run out of bait. And hopefully we can help everybody out and, and um, you know, have good bait that's caught there. and have some good cured bait on the barge. And um, it. It's it's a, it's a going to be on me, Phil. It, yeah. it, if, if I if I do it right, and that's how I plan to do it, we'll we'll be good. We'll be golden. We'll offer a good service. The, the guys, uh, a lot of a lot of the times, um, if I've got good bait at the island, and you've got a small skip, you don't want to uh, carry your bait across the, the you know 20, 15 or, or 20, 25, 30 knots. It's hard to keep bait alive. Yeah. You know, and the guys that use bait and and tuna guys. Even fish and tuna on the backside in between Clemente and um, um, Catalina, there you can run, you got enough time to run back in and get bait. Yeah, you know? definitely. You know, and and we're going to try to have mackerel uh, too for the Marlin guys if the Marlins show up again this year, and that'll be um, there's going to it's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be good, and you're behind me, and and your people are really behind me, and I I'm sorry for we had a. A mishap here this last week on Friday night. Um, it was we, a harrowing experience. Well, it, it, it happens, but yeah. I mean, um, we we You've had a few of those in your life. Yeah, huh? a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wet before. <laughs> a, 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 anyway, we we, um, we had a mishap on Thursday, and then we were setting the net out in front of Seal Beach Pier on Friday night. I got the net halfway out, and the bilge alarms went off. And what had happened? The the, the boat had um, the bay tank. Um, a stringer on, on the deck had broken the day before and the bait tank, the, the bulkhead had slipped back an inch and a half. Oh, geez. And it let loose and there's oh. Oh, 20,000 gallons of water and it's straight into the bilge. And so thanks to the Orange County Sheriff, they, they just happened to be out in front of the harbor. Did you they, put out a May Day? Or? Yeah, I yeah. did. I, 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 you I had did. to, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they were there within minutes, just a couple minutes. And then the, uh, Long Beach Fire was there within just a couple minutes. The guys were great. Did they and have pumps to help they you? They had pumps built into the engines. They just, we, we dropped them in and and they we got control of it really fast. I great. Mean, we still got a lot of electronic <laughs> stuff down in the engine room and, the, and starters and stuff um, wet. Um, so they're all being replaced right now. But we're, we're shooting, the, we'll be fishing by the end of the week. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh no. that's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're gonna we're the the bulkheads. We're gonna do that today. Push that back up, and they're good enough here at Long Beach Sport Fishing to let me come in and tie up. Um, the Eldorado's out on a trip, so we can use their slip. And every everybody straight across the board, including Paul Strauser and Mark Paisano over um, with their bait operation, they're one hundred percent behind me and supportive of the deal. And that that means the world to me. Yeah. And and knowing that they're. Um, this is not competition. We'll complement each other in the long run. Hopefully, yeah, definitely. I, hopefully, I, I, I can um, help them out. And, and they've already done everything. They've done everything that I've asked them. Plus, plus, um, you know, they're, they're they're both aces. That they, they've been fantastic as as always. They they've always been a class of operation from the very get go, from day one that yep. they, they own the boats, and they've done things first class. And look where they landed. They, yeah, they, they, they've um, first place. First place. Yeah, and they're both and they're both good guys. They are. They've they're, been very good to me too yeah. with the landing and with the podcast. No, and they're they're, they're they're good guys. And um, and and Paisano would do anything for me, and, and Paul would already does because Paul's the, the 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 he's the builder of the he the the more hands on guy. 
and he helps me out in any way, anything I've needed. So, that's great. That's yeah. great. So bait wise, you're gonna are you gonna have live squid when that's available? Well, we're gonna we're gonna have live squid. That, that now that that's gonna be. I need a. Well, I've got a rain nose. Um, um, the the having live squid. Um, this is gonna be our advantage. Um, in this business, Phil, is that we're going to be there and there's going to be somebody that you can call 24 7 and you're going to get a, a, a hopefully a speedy response to whatever question you have about the bait. And, um, and also Freeman Adventures, we're going to be carrying you, constant you, 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 updates you know, about where, what, and everything. Yeah. What's what, what has that been like? You turned to me and said, "Hey, why don't you put <laughs> out some info?" And I don't know what you're I, expecting. I, I, I can't even I can't even begin to tell you the, the response um, from your followers, um, the listeners, watchers, whatever you want to call it, is amazing. It, it's absolutely. I'm uh, really happy to hear that. I I. I, I I don't know what it would be. I can't imagine the response of somebody actually being um, a, 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 a someone that is buying time to be on it. It would be it would be amazing. I, I mean, your people. My phone was just on fire last week, and and for me not to come through it was heartbreaking. Oh, but hey, stuff but, happens. But, but, man. The, but the response from your people was all understanding. They wanted to know if everybody was okay. They wow, didn't care. That's great. You. You, you've got good people. Uh, I'm I, telling I, you, Pat. We call it the Freeman Adventures family. I, there, there's no doubt it's family. I, I put out like, hey, we need clothing to go to Mexico. Oh, you know, the freaking 22nd Street Landing, my office is still loaded. full. Loaded. And we've time. already got thousands of pieces of clothing yeah. down to Cedros right now. And we're taking more to Mexicali and other places. But I don't know. These people are such great people. They're you know, wonderful human um, beings. Nine seven six two. And when you started that, I remember when you started that. that um, the following ship that you had then was amazing. But yes, we, but we didn't have the contact like you have now. We didn't know the people like you do now. Yeah, right. It, exactly. It, it was. It's it was kind of like anonymous. It, it, it was. Who's calling? It was. Right. And but but now th this is even when I was up in Oxnard and had squid up in Oxnard, that the, the, the pe people are still calling um, from when I was there. You know. And they're and they're good people, and I've met good people that have came and purchased uh, uh, squid stuff from me. But yeah, because you know, on my end, you look and it says we've had three million views, and you go, "Does that going to translate into like Pat wants to sell bait? Are people going to call him?" And it's nice, well, and I know what's going on on the sport boats, and some of the guys that are like, "Hey, let's I keep this between you us." I had to ask you, please stop. Stop! I can't take. I, I, I'm. I, it's gone. You know, I can't help anybody else. I told you. I think that I had a sport boat call me and say, "Yeah, you we did. definitely need yeah. a couple days in on we the dock." You not mention yeah, us, right? Right. right. Yeah. Now, how does that work? I mean, how hot is that? I mean, oh my god, that, it makes me feel really, really good. Well, it's it's good. You deserve it. Hey, you do too, man. <laughs> so, are you going to bait this weekend? I we, we have full intentions of having bait. We'll have the boat there. We, you, we'll work together on that, and I can alert everybody who's oh, watching this right I'm, now. I'm, there's, there's somebody going to have to pry me out of, out of you out of my dead fingers for you to get away. You don't, you don't <laughs> believe that? I mean, and and we've been friends for a long time, and hopefully, the, with your support and and just your people alone, I, I think I'm going to um, be overwhelmed. I do too. I, I, I mean, that's my hope anyway. And, and, and there's several sport boats in the harbor. We're not going to mention any names um, that that are not regular customers of either bait boat that hopefully I'm going to help them out too. Yeah. You've you already know. helped some guys out, haven't yeah, you, since yeah, you've been down yeah, here? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and um, that that's all. I, I don't, I'm not messing with, with Richie's or, or Jamie's um, customers in the harbor, nor Paul's or Mark's customers in the harbor. That that's their business. I just Catalina. That that's 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 fair. Yeah, you know, and um, they're good with that. And um, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. And uh, we want to work with everybody. And just to finish it off down here. The, the, the let one last flash in the pan. Yeah, and because you and I are no spring chickens, no, are we? No. Well, the the whole the, the the whole group of us. You know, the whole network. Um, so. Hopefully we'll get this in and get her done, you know. And Catalina is not a bad place to die. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> you know, Oregon's nice, but um, the the weather is severe up there, and um, 
right, it's glad to be home. This is home anyway. Are, so. are you, and just thinking out loud, and I'm sure your plans will change, but is this going to be a year-round thing? Or are you going to take winters off? Okay. Or? No, it's, 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 I think that it's going to be a year-round thing. The barge over there, the barge that we don't have um, over there yet, it should have been there, but it's not. It's you had a little story. problem with the construction. Yeah. yeah. We're, we'll be okay. But yeah, yeah I, I'm planning. I, I fully plan on being there through the squid season and, the, and be there next spring when the sea bass mm -hmm. start. And um, you know, I could fish um, the front side of Catalina with a with my net legally um, for live bait, and that um, that's going to be a big advantage. Oh yeah, you know, a huge advantage. Yeah, because yeah. you talked about that change of water temperature. If you're coming from uh, here yeah. and going to there, you're going to avoid all that. Yeah, and and. and you know, we'll go where we need to go. We'll go wherever the, the, the squid are. If we have to go to Clemente or, or Santa Barbara or to Nick, the boat's fully cabled. I can go anywhere I want. I yeah. mean, the boat, I bring the boat up and down from Oregon twice. And I fished Albuquerque last year off the coast. How'd you do, um, by the way? We did okay. Yeah. We, we, we did fine. Um, it was just, it was ice and just, just ice is not, um, you don't get the price yeah. that the refrigerated guys get. But yeah, it was fun. We were, but we were fishing 100, 150 miles off the coast up there in Oregon. Yeah. And in all weather. So the, the, the boat will, will, it's all weather. I, I, I have complete confidence in the boat. And so we'll, we'll be back. Uh, hopefully we're going to be going full speed by the weekend. All right. That sounds okay. good to me, okay. Pat. It is so good to see you. And Phil, it's good to see you. That lobster and shrimp blog, yeah. man. I hate yeah, to they, go they, back to um, Raphael. Uh, Raphael, nice I haven't seen him for 20 years. Yeah, it's been a long time. You know when I, I used to see him? My kids were catching mackerel down there on the docks. <laughs> yeah, we used to do that. Yeah, that's good. We used to be eating mackerel and everything. All right, All right so Phil. you'll be able to check they, they, with they, Freeman they, Adventures. I'll keep you in touch okay. with what Pat is doing. He'll and have he, your bait and... And call the Mignon on Channel 11, or you can call me directly at 541-291-1347. At and I should have an updated message on there for, for anybody that calls, or I'll take your call or return your call. And um, text message me anytime for any questions that you have about the bait situation. Okay? Pat, great Deal. to see you again. All right. All right. Thanks Good for lunch. Thank you.